right, is everyone ready to go? Okay. My name is Mike Boudreau. I'm the sheriff of the Tulare County Sheriff's Office. I wanted to give an update as to where we are today in regards to this case. I will let you know right away, at this point we do not have anyone in custody. But I will continue to keep you informed as to the progress of this case. Many people within the community and actually across the country are very interested in what's happening and what's going on. I feel it's important that I give you what, where we are at this point. I'll give you an overview of what brought us here today. At 0338, early morning hours of Monday, the Tulare County Sheriff's Office was dispatched to a home in the 6800 block of Harvest Road in Goshen. Multiple shots had been fired. I had mentioned before that people reporting the shots fired believed that there was an active shooter uh, in progress. Deputies arrived on the scene exactly seven minutes later. When they arrived, deputies immediately noticed two victims dead in the street. It was later learned that the 911 call actually came from a surviving victim of this shooting. They had not received any injuries from a shooting. They were hiding. Deputies then found a third shooting victim in the doorway of the home. As deputies searched the area, they found multiple victims in the same area at the scene on the property. There were victims both inside the home and outside of the home. We're able to identify those victims today and provide those to you. Many of you have already discovered who they are <coughs> through social media. <coughs> I would caution you Please, <clears throat> don't be listening to factual information from social media. That is not where you will find your facts. I will keep you informed. I will make sure that you have what we have as we are able to release it to you for the integrity of the case. <clears throat> if you have questions, please reach out to our media services here at the Sheriff's Office. What we're able to give you, we will. One of the victims, when deputies arrived, was still alive. He immediately began CPR. Unfortunately, he died at the hospital. The victims are here. Eladio Peraz, 52 years of age. Marcos Peraz, 19 years of age. Jennifer Anaya, 49 years of age. Rosa Peraz, 72 years of age. Alyssa Peraz, 16 years of age. And Nicholas Peraz, 10 months of age. I'd like to make a correction. On scene that night, uh, we believed that the young teenage female was 17 years old. In fact, we later learned that she was 16 years old, and I believe I put out that she was 17. We also believed at the time that the infant was six months old. We later learned that it was 10 months old. So I want to make that correction for all of you today. She was 16, and the small infant was 10 months old. She was found, along with the infant, laying next to her mother, his mother down the street. We believe that the 16-year-old teenage mother and her small infant actually was fleeing and running from the scene. What we have since learned through forensics that it was clear that the shooters stood over the top of the 16-year-old mother and fired rounds into her head. The 10-month-old infant also suffered from the same attack. None of this was by accident. It was deliberate. Intentional. And horrific. I will tell you this. We do know of three surviving victims from this, what we're describing as a massacre. Three. We will be interviewing them and collecting as much information as we can. There was one person inside the home hiding as they could hear the gunfire erupting inside the home. The description from him is that he was in such a state of fear that all he could do was hold the door, hoping that he was not the vex victim. Detectives, at this point, we do believe that we are in the search for two known suspects. Potentially a third in an escape vehicle, but we don't know that to be true. This is going off a hypothesis from law enforcement. But we do know that, in fact, we have two suspects. 
it is very clear that this family was a target and that there are gang associations involved as well as drug investigations with this in this home. But let me make this very clear. Not all these people in this home are gang members and not all of these people in this home are drug dealers. The 16 year old female is an innocent victim. The grandmother inside appears to be an innocent victim and definitely this 10 month old child is an innocent victim. I'll tell you a little bit of the history of the home. On January 3rd of this year, Tulare County Sheriff's Office patrol officers conducted what we call a parole compliance check. Basically what that is is when we uh, know people who are on felony parole and are in the community, uh, we will stop and make sure that they're abiding by the law. This compliance check done on January 3rd is the same home where the massacre occurred on Monday. This is a known home to our department. This is where gang activity has routinely occurred in the past. During that compliance check, deputies saw shell casings laying on the ground outside the home. When asked if we could go inside and search, they refused, and that's where the search warrant was written. We obtained a legal search warrant from a judge, and we were able to do a search warrant of the home. And we found Eladio Peraz, who was already on felony convictions was in possession of ammunition, felon in possession of a firearm, felon in possession of a short barrel rifle, felon in possession of an assault weapon, a loaded weapon in possession of a firearm, and possessions of a controlled substance. He unfortunately was able to bail out four days later. So law enforcement doing their due diligence in community service and protection, part of our duties is to go into these homes and try to remove guns, drugs, and that type of activity. And this home was known to us that's how I'm able to say that this is a gang-related activity. <clears throat> I have also been quoted as saying this was a cartel-like execution. Make no mistake, I'm not saying that this is a cartel, but also be clear that I am not eliminating that possibility. These people were clearly shot in the head, and they were also shot in places that the shooter would know that quick death would occur. This is also similar to high-ranking gang affiliations in the style of execution that they commit. So we don't know if it is a gang-affiliated shooting, a cartel affiliation, or if the two are combined. But what we can tell you is the manner in which this has occurred is definitely one of the two, if not combined. As the investigation unravels and we're able to confirm one or the other, you will be the first to know. Detectives, as far as man hours, Detectives have been working 24 hours a day. And when I say that, I don't mean they go home at midnight and get back up again at 7 in the morning. We have investigators working literally 24 hours a day. With forensic analysis and the collection of forensics, we have our crime lab, digital forensics, our coroner's office, and property and evidence. There has literally at this been point been hundreds, hundreds of items of evidence collected. And we expect more items of evidence to be collected. As of this press conference, detectives are still canvassing the area, looking for surveillance videos, asking for the public's health help. And so here today uh, within this conference, I'm also asking for the public's help. Anyone in that area, if you have a business, it is an industrial area very nearby in the Goshen area, there are residences with ring cameras, there are video all over. Between the hours of 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., we're asking you to go back, take a look at your business videos. Go back and look at your home videos. Doesn't matter how far away you were from the scene. Any video evidence that you find suspicious, please contact the Tulare County Sheriff's Office. We want to look at it. Take the time to go look at your business video and your ring camera videos and report what you have and save what you have. I would also like to commend and thank the law enforcement community that has come out in support and offering assistance in this investigation. Behind me today, of which I received phone calls within hours, from the ATF, FBI, Homeland Security, DEA, Department of Justice, and the California Department of Corrections. 
Every one of them called within hours offering resources and assistance. I have them with me today behind me. I have our investigators, our captains of investigations, but I also have those federal agencies. We are pulling out all stops. We are turning over every rock. Every bit of information in the community that you feel is suspicious or that you would like to give us, we want it. I received a phone call from U.S. Congressman uh, Jim Costas. He offered uh, victim support. He sits on a committee for victims of these types of crimes and have offered federal support for our victims. And we must remember we have victims. I will bring you up today as our autopsies. Autopsies on the bodies have started today. They will likely be completed on Friday. That will be part of the information in our next press conference that I'll be able to provide. I, I want to introduce Joshua Jackson, special agent in charge with the ATF, and he will speak about our $10,000 reward that we are now offering. Thank you, Sheriff. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Joshua Jackson. I'm the acting special agent in charge for the San Francisco Field Division ATF. ATF's mission is uh, simple and, and clear. It is to prevent, reduce, and solve violent crime. And in this particular instance, solving this investigation is a priority of this investigative team. Law enforcement, we know, pooling all resources, our expertise, and our partnerships, federal, state, and local partnerships, will give us the best result to bring justice to these victims. In addition to the investigative team that you guys see behind us is we are asking, as the sheriff mentioned, assistance from the public. And part of that is announcing this reward of up to $10,000 for information to help move this investigation forward. Please contact the local sheriff's office here with any information that can lead the investigation uh, further. ATF will provide all resources at our disposal to support this team and be a part of this uh, to its conclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. So I want to announce the community as well. There is a $10,000 reward. We have more money coming in uh, from, from groups that are offering special reward, and we anticipate that that reward will go up. I want to give a note of caution as we begin to conclude and potentially open it up for questions. I know today you're wanting as much information as you possibly get. I want to reassure you that I know a lot. There's a lot I can't tell you. I can tell you that there is a great deal of amount of work that is going into the intelligence side of this investigation. I know a lot, but we do need the public's help. The public's help will help support not only theories, but the IT side, the technical side of things that we're looking at as well. So when I say that, if I don't answer your question, it's because they're watching too. When you put this information out, they want to know what we know. What I will tell them is we know a lot. We anticipate that there will be arrests. When that occurs, I can't say that that happens in a week's time or even a month's time. But what I can tell you is that we will be slow, methodical, accurate, precise, and that we will make sure that when we make these arrests, that this investigation for the victims, these people will be held to justice. So with that, I'll conclude. I'll open it up to questions. I just wanted to be able to bring you and the community up to date. Again, to the community, this was not a random act of violence. This was a very specific targeted act of violence. So I don't want the community to be scared or worried. I will say that I have received, not only on social media, but personal phone calls, text messages, as well as many of my, as my staff, heartfelt condolences for the family and this young 10-month-old child, young teenage mother, the grandmother inside the home. Innocent victims. It should have never occurred. We want to hold them to justice. So with that, I will open it up to questions and if I can answer. Sheriff, you mentioned you're still working out if it's a gang or cartel organized yeah. group. Do you believe them to be local, whether it's any of those groups? 
Well, when it comes to certain gangs, as well as the cartel, there is local connection that spreads across the state. I can tell you that some of our investigations have already led outside the county. Sheriff, during, during your time as sheriff here in Tulare County, is this one of the most serious things you have seen? I've seen, I've been with, I've been with the sheriff's office for 36 years. And the world that we live in, as far as investigating and working for our victims, is an ugly world. Um, this is uh, one of the most egregious that I have seen. However, I have seen many very similar to it. What I have not seen is the very apparent murder of a 10-month-old child for no reason. What I have not seen is the very clear assassination style to the head of a teenage mother. That I have not seen. It's egregious. Sure. Yes, um, So has Eladio Paz, the intended um, uh, person that they were after, but everyone else was an innocent victim of this crime? Okay, so I know a lot, but I can't answer that question. What I want to tell you is I don't believe he I don't believe he was the initial intended target. Why do you think he was targeted? It's a great question, and I know the answer to it, but I can't tell you. Have you dealt with a lot of cartel crime in the past, or like what's the spectrum on that? Well, I can tell you that we do have cartels here in the Central Valley. Uh, we do have cartel in Tulare County. Uh, I am the vice president of the, of the California State Sheriff's Association. I meet with the sheriffs uh, on a regular basis. I can tell you cartels are here. Uh, they are here for multiple reasons. Uh, selling drugs is lucrative. There's a lot of money to be made, um, and it focuses on the money. The other is, is that we have a very unsecure border right now. Um, there's a lot of uh, back and forth when it comes to the cartels and free movement up and down the state and across the border. Um, we have intelligence on cartels as well as um, gangs and drug trafficking organizations and, and the like. Most of those crisscross each other many times. Um, but be very clear, I'm not identifying or pointing a finger at any one cartel. I'm not. I'm saying that what took place is very much like what we've seen in the past when it comes to an execution by cartel. Are you able to tell us the relationship between everybody on the board here, all the victims? We can. I just received a, a briefing, but I think it might be better served. Uh, Lieutenant, are you able to give the relation of all those on the board? Hold on. Uh, I can, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm comfortable, we are comfortable telling you that the victims on this board are immediate family to each other. That's, that's what I'm comfortable releasing now. Okay. So I think what they're referring to, grandmother. Um, yes. Um, <coughs> Rosa is the grandmother. Elisa is the grandchild uh, to someone who survived uh, at the scene. This is a, another grandchild, I believe, of someone at the scene. Uh, this is a girlfriend very close to uh, one of the survivors. Uh, Nicholas is Elisa's young son so I hope that helps what about the survivors um, <coughs> Sheriff, what can you share with us about them what can you tell us about what their experience was how are they going to be able to help you in your investigation yeah that's a great question one of them as I indicated he could hear the shots being fired uh, up and down the hallway he uh, put his feet uh, up against the door and laid flat um, as he could, hoping no one would come in. He actually describes them rattling the doorknob uh, to see if they could get in, and then they moved on, leaving him inside. The two others were hiding uh, in a nearby trailer where one of the victims was shot in the threshold of the trailer door. Fortunately, uh, the two suspects in this case never entered that trailer, and they remain hidden inside the trailer. So we have three surviving victims who are providing a great deal of information. A lot of times you would this question would would they do drugs or weapons or is it just something that you found yourself in the past? We have. Uh, in the past we have found methamphetamine, marijuana and automatic weapons. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have a description of the people that you're looking for that were involved in this homicide? I do not. Not at all. Not a description of a car. None whatsoever. I know certain things that I'm not able to release right now. I will tell you, there's much of many of the questions that you're asking are very, they're great questions. They, they really are. Uh, and it's things as, as we move along, I'll be able to so come back at the next press conference or the one following. Hopefully, I can answer them with more detail. I will tell you that the gentleman behind me, as well as uh, many of my administrative staff, we have been in briefings on this case, and there's a lot that we know. Um, but again, let me just reiterate I have to be very careful and cautious because they're watching what's happening today as well. With that, is there any way to tell the connection between the suspect and the victim? As far as a relationship or as far as? Yes, like how you know that they're suspects. <laughs> well, I can tell you that there's been uh, uh, certain things turned over to us um, that bring us to that conclusion. They knew each other? The suspects knew? I don't think they did. Okay. Goshen, being a population of just 3,000 people, would you say that this is shocking for it to happen there? It's shocking for the nation. Not only is it shocking for a small farming community of something like this to take place, it's shocking to our county, it's shocking to the state, and I have to tell you, I'm receiving phone calls from all across the country. Fellow law enforcement, people just of concern, it's shocking. It's shocking that we live in a community where this type of danger exists. Um, we realized that there was wrongdoings going on at that home. That's what we do as good cops. We investigate those types of things. But there's also innocent victims here as a result of that type of behavior. Um, and going in and, and massacring an entire family um, goes above and beyond. This is why I continue to focus back on a high-level gang style execution and or cartel execution because this is not the normal. Not the normal for us in this county anyway, and arguably not the normal for the state of California. Was the 10 ten month old child in foster care and on a visit with the mother? Oh, that I don't know. That's a great question. If you have that, I, I don't know that. All I know is that it in fact is her child. Um, she was laying next to that child, um, both of them with gunshot wounds to the head when we, when we arrived. And do you think that this shooting was a mapped out of the residence? And exactly my point. <clears throat> much of what we're going over, much of our SWAT team is very much involved as well. This is a methodical, well planned out, tactical, um, executed quickly. So from the time of the phone call until we arrived was a very short amount of time. And by then they were long gone. So uh, what they did to plan it out, I, I can't say. We haven't talked to them. I plan on speaking with them. Um, and we'll see exactly uh, how that was, uh, was done. Again, and it's important, uh, anyone with video surveillance uh, or video cameras, ringtones, anything within the community, it's going to help us tie together a timeline as well as um, the manner in which we believe it happened. Sheriff, uh, you have uh, fair federal authorities working with you. What kind of assistance are they providing for you in this investigation? Well, there's a lot the federal resources can provide when it comes to intelligence gathering. Um, that that they're doing, I've been asked to hold. Uh, not to provide or turn over. And there's a reason for it. Uh, the reason is again and again and again, um, we don't want future evidence to be destroyed because they know from this press conference what we're looking for. And how sure are you that you will capture the suspect in this case? Well, no one in life can be 100% sure of anything. My hopes are, my hopes are that um, we capture them. I have high hopes. I have high hopes with what I've been briefed on so far and what I've seen. Uh, the amount of energy and effort that's going into these cases when it comes to our local investigators within the agency themselves, as well as our federal counterparts that have sat with our teams putting together a good quality case. Uh, I'm very confident that um, we will result in an arrest. Uh, the timeline on that, no one can tell. Um, I don't want to rush anything. We want to go slow, as I indicated before, methodical, uh, and uh, make sure that we do the right thing. Sheriff, I know this is an extreme example, but it strikes me that there's been a spate of recent seemingly gang-related killings in other rural areas, places where we wouldn't normally maybe associate with, with, with those kind of types of crimes. Can you talk a little bit about why there seems to be a, an increase in gang activity in, in, in rural places in particular? Well, I think what we're starting to see, uh, if we want to go deep into it, uh, what we're starting to see is that gangs have existed for uh, 
many, many years in California through our, our state correctional system evolving into the community. It's all surrounding geographical um, ownership as well as uh, being able to make money, whether that's through prostitution, whether that's through extortion, whether that's through drug dealing or gun uh, arms dealing. Any way that you can make money through criminal means, they're going to do it. What, we're, what we've seen is, is that you know, gangs don't typically want to be identified by law enforcement, and so they'll live quietly and peacefully within a quiet community never being noticed by anyone who's living around them until something tragic occurs. When something tragic occurs, everyone says, where did this gang come from? Well, they've infiltrated a community and live there making money under uh, the protection of living out in the open. And so we're f starting to find a lot of that in California. Also, I would have to reiterate is that, you know, we, we, California has taken a very soft on crime approach. We have to begin holding people accountable for violent crimes. People who use guns who are criminals need to be held accountable for using guns and being criminals. Uh, for those who are drug dealing up and down the state of California, providing narcotics to our children, providing narcotics in our communities, providing an unsafe environment for those in a community, we have to take a very strong approach when it comes to our justice program. We need to make sure that we're holding people to the state of California, we need to hold people. We need to take a look at what we've done with our criminal justice system and begin putting people back in prison for these types of activities. Are you uh, worried the suspects could be either out of the state already or in another country? I can, o I can only surmise. Um, if it was me, I wouldn't be anywhere near here. But then again, to your point earlier, maybe the best hiding place is right where you think we're not gonna look. So we're not. Uh, we're going to look under every rock, uh, whether it's uh, into Mexico or into Canada or across the country. That's why our federal counterparts are here. You know, we're, it's going to be far-reaching the the long arm of the law. Um, if you left our county, that's good, but you're going to be back. You're going to be back sitting in a jail cell awaiting justice. So that's a great question. Um, but uh, law enforcement and partnership over the years have learned to collaborate and work together. Um, you, you know, much like the recent Idaho shooting, as you saw, he, he traveled all the way across the country. Um, but law enforcement worked in partnership to get that man in custody. It didn't matter how far he went. And we were going to treat it as the same. Uh, Chet, is the father of the baby, he, he's one of the survivors? I'm sorry? The father of the baby, he's one of the survivors or no? You guys talk with the father? I don't know who the father is. I wasn't briefed on that today. I'm sure investigators are aware of it, but I... I, I I'm not sure who the father is. is I'll find out for you, involved? so don't leave today until you find out. Yes? Is there welfare services involved? <coughs> I, 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 as far as what? With, with her and the child? Yeah. It, there could be. Our, our focus of attention right now is not that. Our focus of attention right now is, is catching mass murders. Um, um, if it comes to welfare services or what was involved with that child as to, as to services, I would divert that question to welfare services. I, I don't know that. I can tell you that Donnie Youngblood, uh, Kern County, reached out to me, uh, offering up assistance. I had San Benito County Sheriff's Office reach out to me, uh, wanting uh, to see if they could send gang investigators down. I received phone calls from law enforcement and sheriffs all over the state of California saying, you know, yeah, because I know them um, as well. Uh, not just because I know them, but it's law enforcement trying to do the right thing. If we need more people, I can make a phone call tomorrow and, and have a bunch of people here. But I'm very confident in my staff and what they're doing. They're very skilled and veteran investigators. They've collected a lot of information over the last uh, few hours, um, partnering with our federal counterparts who are equally as talented in the, field that's the fields that they are in. I'm very confident in who we have um, and what we're doing with this agency. And in the, in the need that I do have to reach out and, and do some more, we will. I can tell you that I'm reaching out to um, other sheriffs for the pen potential of um, uh, intelligence gathering and or uh, potential arrests in the future. So we'll see. Two, two things. Uh, I'll come back to you, sir. Border Patrol, uh, we have not uh, reached out to them, um, as I understand, but we do have our federal counterparts who have uh, connections with the Marshal's Office, as I was briefed this morning that will uh, be monitoring both borders, Canada as well as Mexico. Sir, your question in the back. Yes, uh, do you have someone that can do some information in Spanish? We do, we talked about that earlier. We'll have a Spanish speaker, uh, Captain Torres. Uh, he'll be able to give you some information if it's a little easier for you in translation into your audience. You. Yes, of course. Sheriff, we've been walking around Goshen a little while the past two days and a lot of the neighbors there, they're very scared. I know that you've been saying that this is, this is not a random act 
lot of the people in that neighborhood, they're pretty scared right now. So do you have a message for them? And I would be if it was me. You know, if I'm in my home and my neighbors were just massacred in a slaughter, I would be scared too. Um, I'd be locking my windows and locking my doors. Um, but this is what I will tell you. Um, this was, I'm confident, factual, that they were targeted for a reason, some of which I can't share. Uh, they were not there to hurt anyone else in the community. But be vigil. Be aware of your surroundings. Call us if you need us, we'll be there. I can tell you that we're working with the Visalia Unified Schools District today. Our school resources officers went out to the local elementary schools to, to uh, help with that school district just to meet with the children, to give them a sense of peace, to give them an understanding that law enforcement is here for you. And so the superintendent of that school, uh, uh, Visalia Unified, reached out to me last night, and we were very happy to work in partnership with the school resource officers going out and speaking with our children. So, uh, again, a another really great question. I would say that um, you are going to be you are going to be scared, but but make sure that you understand there is resources for you. If you have something suspicious, call us. We're there. Um, we're your law enforcement. Dial nine one one if you need to. We're on our way. We are putting. Uh, we have patrol in those areas as as that's the area responsible for the sheriff's office. That's my responsibility, and we want to provide public safety. Um, and if there was any more to it, I would let the public know. If there was a need for you to uh, leave the area or, or, or hunker down and, and, and just sit in your living room, I would tell you. Um, that's not the case. If it was the case where don't be out late at night, that's not the case. I can tell you factually that this was specifically targeted. What message would you have for, for somebody that sees this today and maybe they have information but mm -hmm. they're scared? I, and, and I would say that I completely understand that. Holding on to information that you have, you would feel maybe you may be a target. What I want to explain to you is, is that um, we have anonymous tip lines. We have anonymous text tip lines, and we'll provide those for you through our media team. They'll make sure that you have them. Uh, you can call anonymously and never give us your name. No one will ever know who you are. But that little bit of information that you do give may very well be the tipping point for a case. Um, I understand the community being scared. Um, when this occurred, and my undersheriff gave me a phone call, it was 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, it's not our norm. And I understand the community's fear of what just occurred. Um, time does heal all wounds. Let's give it some time. But in the interim, understand we are there for you. We are there for our community. And we have put a little extra patrol so that they can see our patrol officers out there to give them more comfort. As yeah, as great question. Sorry, as far as the survivors go, are they in any danger? Well, um, I don't want to say no. I mean, this, this was definitely a specific targeted massacre. I don't know how else to put it other than massacre. I mean, multiple deaths uh, at close range. Uh, we have offered uh, support. We have offered um, uh, security if need be. Um, the, the family's refusing that at this point. Um, so <clears throat> for me to speak on their behalf would be very difficult. But I would always be vigilant of your surroundings, especially after something like this. A lot of these incidents, they tend to have some sort of retaliation. Is there anything the sheriff's office is doing to possibly stop that? That's another great question, but I will tell you that I don't believe that it's a retaliatory situation. My last question, Sarah. Sure. Uh, you paused a bit when you were describing the, the horrific scene there. Mm -hmm. I can imagine a lot of people are shocked all over the country, all over the state. How are the deputies doing who, who's out there? You know, that's another great question. We have employee assistant programs with the sheriff's office when the time comes uh, if they need it. But I can tell you right now, they are in uh, work mode. Uh, they are focused. Uh, they are doing what they're trained to do. They're professionals. They're working very, very hard. I see it. I can tell you that many of those officers that are out there on scene, I see a couple here, um, I get chills because they're fathers. They're fathers. They're brothers. They're dads. They have grandmas. And so when we go out to these things, as a human being, you can't help but be impacted by what you're seeing. But what I can tell you is that when I arrived on scene, I was receiving detailed information and briefings because they rolled right into the professionals that they are. And they will continue to be professionals, working hard each and every day uh, until we have people in custody for this crime.
great question. Thank you very much. Yes. So you probably remember this. In 1995, we had a shooting in Tulare at Marshall School. So five people were killed that day. Has anything of this nature happened since then in between? I'm having the hardest time remembering anything of this nature uh, with this uh, many people at once in a long time. Any of my staff recall anything more? That was two, wasn't it? There's four on the reservation. Okay, yeah, I do remember that now. We did have we did have a case um, on the Indian reservation. I think there was four. They're indicating that there was four people. I do remember that case, but this one carries a little bit different twist. And I'm going to tell you why. I know for a fact that this young lady was running for her life. And I know for a fact that there was no reason to kill her, but they did. I know for a fact that this six-month-old baby was relying on the comfort. I'm sorry, 10-month-old baby was relying on the comfort of her mother, his mother. And there was no reason to execute that baby, and they did it. Somehow we wrap our minds around the fact that gang members killing bang gang members is a bad thing and we investigate those to the full extent of the law but we have a grandmother that was shot and killed while she was sleeping in her bed we have a 16 year old female trying to protect her infant so it carries a different feel in my opinion but yes it's tragic and haven't seen anything like this in years yes okay so with that i, th I think we'll conclude I, I just wanted to bring you in here today to let you know we have uh, rewards that we are putting out for anyone. Can you please uh, reiterate in your broadcast as you're editing or however that you put it together that we are asking for the public's health when it comes to video and any surveillance that they may have uh, on their buildings or on their homes. Between the hours of 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. or maybe even